Hey there and welcome back to the video series. So in the previous video we installed Laravel and we can see from the Visual Studio Code that if we take a look in resources we have uh, a folder called views and in resources views we will have the uh, the views that we use in this application and we have a view called welcome.play.php and this is the uh, the startup website uh, web page that is the being displayed right now that brings me to um, just mention briefly that Laravel is an MVC framework so it is centered around the architecture of model view controller and that's why we have the views in here and it is located in the resources and the views folder okay the reason why it says blade is because we have a template engine in uh, Laravel that is called blade and a template engine is a feature uh, of Laravel where you can uh, kind of discouple the presentation layer from the data so you can make all this HTML and CSS and then you can include dynamic code so to speak that is not really PHP but you can have dynamic code like this uh, linker here where you have the URL and you have a route here and you can also make programming like constructs like if else statements and all this stuff you have a whole bunch of different features that you can use to make a dynamic website so you don't end up with a static front page. So that is Blade, that is the template engine that uh, Laravel uses. And there are a bunch of other template engines around. If you're using Drupal, you have a template engine called Twig. Uh, so pretty much all frameworks have some sort of template engine. And if you're using .NET, MVC, you also have a template engine called Razor. So Laravel has Blade. And uh, we see uh, an example right here. Uh, next up is that MVC. We also have the model and the models are in the app folder. You can see we have an, an app folder and in there we have models. And right now there is only a user model. And the reason why we have a user model is because Laravel has also comes included with the abilities to make authentication out of the box. So you can make this login system, registering a user, login the user, email, password, and all this stuff. That comes included with Laravel and it's really easy to use. So we have a user model out of the box here. And uh, finally, when we start to make controllers, MVC, so the C is for controllers, we also have in HTTP, we have a controller. Uh, folder here and we just have a basic controller right now but we will be creating a controller for our product that will handle that and it might seem a little overwhelming all these directories when you don't know the framework and it is it it, it can be overwhelming because we don't know any of these uh, folders yet but it is one of the indications that this framework is opinionated so it tries to help you a lot it tries to show you a best practice way of structuring your files so there is a reason why we have these directories there there's a reason why we have a config folder with all the different configuration files in there there is a reason why we have an app folder with the models folder in there and there's a reason why we have a database folder that contains all the migrations the seedings all that stuff so just to notice that that it, it, it is totally okay if it seems a little bit overwhelming with all these folders at first hand. But that's also why Laravel comes shipped with such a comprehensive documentation. So you can actually look at the how it is built, the directory structure. Also, have you can see there is a, a documentation part about the directory structure, how that works, and a description of that, the config directory, what that does, okay? So it is really, really well documented. Okay, so one thing we need to do is we should connect Laravel to a database because right now we just installed the framework and we can see the front page, but we don't have any connections to a database yet. So first we need to go to our development environment in, um, in XAMPP or MAMP or WAMP or something else. So we will go to localhost our web server then we will go to dashboard and what we're looking for is PHP my admin because we need to create a new database in uh, MySQL that is a part of the LAMP stack 
So we will go to databases. I'm just going to change the language here. So it comes in English here. So let's go to databases and let's create a new database called Laravel CRUD. So I'm just going to copy the name Laravel CRUD and click create. So now we have an empty database and we don't need to do anything more in PHP My Admin because Laravel also comes shipped with what we call migration tools. So you can create database tables from within the framework. You don't have to create them in PHP My Admin. And you can do a lot of cool things regarding seeding the database, creating test data and all this stuff, making a fresh database. So what we need to do now is we need to go to the .env because Laravel is configured by a .env file. So that is a file that contains all the secrets of the application. And that's a file that should definitely not be committed to GitHub. And we also have a git ignore file. And we can see if we go to the .git ignore file, we have .env on the list. So it will not be committed to any GitHub repository. We also have vendor node modules. So we have all the normal things that we that we don't need to commit. So if we go to .env, let's just find the database connection stuff here. We can see DB connection and we have the database name. That should not be Laravel. That should be Laravel CRUD. And we got root. Oh, and we don't have a password. That seems okay because we're using XAMPP. If we are running on a remote host, then you probably have a real password and a real username uh, other than root and also another DB host, because this is just the local host. So that's basically it. We have an empty database and we have the root and no password. Okay. Then we have, uh, if we go to the terminal, because Laravel comes shipped with a command line tool called Artisan. And let's see if we can search the search here. You can see Artisan. Uh, console, there is a handy CLI command line interface that will uh, let you do a lot of commands, all different commands uh, from uh, migrating a database, creating a model, creating a controller, all that sort of things. You can read out a lot about this in here. And if we, uh, let's just see here, run the artisan, whoop, and we run PHP artisan migrate. Then we can see that it, Laravel tells us that my migration table created successfully. It has it has migrated a users table, passwords, and a failed jobs table. So that is the default setup of the database table. And if we head back to PHP my admin, we can see if we refresh the database now, we have a database created out of the box from Laravel, uh, ready to have users in them. And we can see if we go to users, we have uh, set up for name, email, email verified at, also the password, a lot of things. Out of the box, we didn't define anything. So now we have connected Laravel with our database and we can make, of course we can make extra tables using the PHP artisan command. Then we can create a new definition for a new table. It will be in the database. Uh, in the mi migration we can see here, if we go to database migrations, we have the different database table migration that Laravel has just executed here. And we can see if we take the create users, we can see the, now I know it's a small window here. Whoop. We can see the definition of the users table. We can also modify this if we want to do that. Okay, so I think this is enough for this video. I don't want uh, the video to get too long here, but uh, we have connected Laravel to our database, uh, our MySQL database. And next video, we will set up the product table so we can start working on our product CRUD web application. So I hope you make this work. Have fun with this. Bye-bye.